I think Druid Mirror. It's not. It's not, but it's not a zoo for ties. Even for ties, it's a handlock. So that surprises me a lot. And for Carlos, we have a Druid here. Even with a Black Knight already, but we do not know is it ramp? Is it with White Crows? Is it just normal Druid? And the problem is, what, when you play against the lock, you don't know is it a zoo lock? Then you want to keep the swipe. If it's a hand lock, you really want to have this Black Knight. But the Black Knight is okay. Not if your enemy is just playing Mountain Giant, Mountain Giant, <laughs> Twilight Drake, ignore Taunt Ups. That's annoying and that's a problem. But he gets a big Game Hunter early on. We see a Mountain Giant for Thais, but the back Game Hunter for Carlos is just waiting to get played. This is looking... Ooh. Well, this looked good for Carlos until now. Thais has a Twilight Drake too. And in difference to the big Game Hunter... That minion cannot, you, know, you cannot snipe it away. You need to silence it, and Carlos is at the moment out of silence. Yeah, he doesn't have a keeper yet. Well, he has an innervate yeti. That's a possible play. He'll just drop that biggie on the board. Would be okay, since we don't see any taunt ups for ties. So Carlos, maybe innervate yeti. And the annoying thing is, if he innervates a yeti, he has no follow up move. So he might consider innovating a Druid of the Claw, but then he can turn four, play the Yeti as a follow-up. This is the only reason why you shouldn't innovate a Yeti out yet, if you do not have a card to play afterwards. And that's always to consider. That's why it's normally not good to innovate out a Harvest Golem if you do not have a turn two minion to drop. And another Mountain Giant for Ties. This is incredible. It is not the hand incredible. Is just so so potent. Yeah, this is just some amazing hand for him. He can even drop his Urzan Ring next turn to not get too many cards in his hand, and then next turn go for Twilight Ray first, then Mountain Giants. The Mountain Giant. Yeah, you said it, Giants. Well, now we we might see Innervate a Druid of the Claw, and then follow up by Yeti next turn, and even taunt it up. So we're on turn four. I would taunt it up now, just bear form that minion to prevent the Soul Fire Madness. Okay, we get a Druid of the Cloud. And now, as we said, he might play his oh, Ancient Watcher or his Urzan Ring Farseer. Two possible minions to drop down here. Or he just goes Leroy, Coin Leroy, and next turn, uh, <laughs> next turn, Mortal those little drakes to draw more cards. Likely. Nah, he coins out his Twilight Drake. This is a possible play. And the only annoying thing about that play is... Can't play Giants next turn. Yeah, you, you're you just losing some time you actually need to get Ooh. that stuff out. Well, 4-8, and you cannot get a kill. That's what we were talking about. That's what's so annoying. And if he gets a... Well, that's just annoying. He can attack, heal himself up. But he's not getting that 4-6 kill this turn. If he's not playing his Leroy to just rush it in. Okay. But it looks still okay. Well that that's super annoying. This this move this turn was so crucial. He can only play a white rose, for example, but he needed to have a minion, whatever. He he needed to have something to follow up with now, but he didn't. So his Yeti might kill the 3-3. Three three. Yeah, might most deal, likely. He might, he might deal 5 damage to the base, but he couldn't get anything out, and that hurts so much. If he's the Druid of the Claw dies next turn, and then he plays a Sunwalker, well, that Sunwalker will get Siphon Sold, for example. Is this... This is not cool at all. And is he really thinking about... Oh, this this is so oh. this is so going to hurt. I I don't I don't understand the play. Well, he didn't want him to taunt it up or to get it even crazier, but still, I'm confused too. I would say that was the wrong thing to do here, as Carlos. Model coil, watcher. Model coil, watcher, owl. He could do everything. Oh, he he wants to get his giants out. Just go stronger and stronger. This is 
this is okay with Carlos. He's just saying that's okay with me. I can pick Game Hunter you now. So the Watcher play might have been better, but you cannot count with a big Game Hunter every time. And the good thing is, well, there's a second Giant incoming. That's true, but still. Two, two times we could have seen different moves, but you do not know your enemy's hand. We see a big Game Hunter and we're like, please don't play your Mountain Giant, you're going to lose him. Well, he will lose him anyways, L more uh, better now than later. And he can just play his next mountain and soul fire away the big game hunter. Let's hope he doesn't lose his siphon soul. Well, let's hope he's not losing his owl. Watcher. Or he couldn't get past the 510. Siphon soul. Yeah, it's siphon <laughs> soul. But owl also. So two cards he really doesn't want to lose. He plays his Ancient of Lore to draw some cards, but... It he needs a second big game hunter if he does this play, and he might... Well, he's going to take 8 damage to the face now. Well, but next turn, he could go for the Mark of the Wild Black Knight combo. Well, that's true. He might not even uh, do the 8 damage to the face. He could also trade with a 5-5 five five and heal him up, for example. That's a possible thing to do. And then taunt them both. And then taunt them both, or draw a card. So this is an event... I could see happening. Then he doesn't even need to mark of the wild here. Yeah. Well, but he just goes for his siphon soul. But is he going to mark of the wild, or is he just hoping for another big game hunter if he has one actually in his deck? Most druids run one. We know the potential is there to play against two. Yeah, not but not but surprised. But we that's yeah, that was the most likely play. Just mark of the wild, black knight him away. You called it. I accept it. And now there's a 4-5 or five on the board. So it looked extremely good for Ties. But now, with Carlos' hand, and if I compare it with Ties' hand, it's looking good, better for Carlos at the moment. But there's always uh, just, just one Twilight Drake already turning the tides, being a 4-8 again, super annoying, and Carlos is not getting any silence. Oh, he gets Ancient of War. That's a good minion, a good strong minion. And you kind of want to play it now. You could also go for Sunwalker, trade swipe, but so then your your Black Knight drops down to one HP, and you know there are those mortal calls. I would say Sunwalker swipe. I like that move before he gets his minion up to five attack and trades with something. Ancient of War is okay too to do, I would say. Mm, but I, I prefer your swipe play. That's a bit better. He drops down to one, that's true. But he has a Sunwalker out that's undamaged. So with that, with that shield, and that's so important. Double Mortal Coil even. So he can, he can just run that Mortal mm. Coil in to break the shield. He, he, can, he can Mortal Coil the Black Knight. Silence his Watcher. Go for Defender of Argus, Mortal Coil to break the shield and then trade. Clear the board and have a 5-1. That sounds crazy, but it works. As you say. It's not, it's not that crazy. <laughs> it's not that crazy, but it's still a little bit. Well, now he cannot do it anymore. He can still silence and um, kill him. Since uh, he silences away the shield. Well, he We're can't kill him because he cannot attack. Oh, he cannot attack, so he used his silence for that and not for... W w wow. That faceless minip, if he had an innervate, that would be Ancient of War plus Ancient of War. And then Tyze is kind of screwed if that would happen. I mean, he's, he's most likely going to trade against the Owl. And then... I, I would go for Ancient of War. I would actually go for Ancient of Lore really? and see what you draw. But you're on 25 HP, you feel pretty well, you feel comfortable, you're not going to die. I see where you're saying go for a war, so your 4-5 minion that drops down to 4-2 is going to survive. Yeah. That's one, one good thing you're taking from it. You could consider destroying those cards, getting more options. 
I just want to play an Ancient of War, innovate another Ancient of War. You can still do it. You got you got the second in your hand, but that move just brings you the those two big ass minions instantly on the board. We see an Alexstrasza in Tice Druid to get your enemy down and then do your crazy Leroy play. Another problem with your play would be that the potential to to die is always there at turn ten because. You have 20 damage from the Leroy Power Overwhelming Faceless combo, plus one of the Soul Fires, and he didn't use a Soul Fire yet. And he knows he drew already a lot of cards, so this is always a combo that could happen. If he didn't have a taunt by then, he would just be dead now. Well, he would only take 26 damage, and that would be enough <laughs> to kill him. If he had the combo, but as we know, Ty doesn't have it, and now he has a problem with a 5-10 Taunter on the board. He could play Leroy Soulfire to get a kill, for example. Just drain HP, hope for a Siphon Soul or another Silence. That's, that's the most likely play. Well, he could also just drop the Alexstrasza, bring his enemy down, cross your fingers. Power Overwhelming, additionally, that's super good. The amazing thing is he can kill... I wanted to say, I'm, I'm surprised he did. I, I wanted to say, why didn't he use Power Overwhelming? That play was way better. <laughs> that was, was you were what you did, what you called first. No, uh, but I'm I'm still, I was like, was it Power Overwhelming? My eyes went blind and I was like, yes, <laughs> he used Power Overwhelming. That's so cool. You can kill that minion instantly. But it worked well, way better for him, and that 5-2 two, two, two is even on the board. It's going to die to a Ras now. Do you think? Why? Well, I, I was expecting it just to die to a Ras now, so he can next turn go easy mode attack and maybe play Druid of the Claw plus Faces Manipulator and go for 13 damage instantly. So that, that was a possibility to go like crazy damage next turn with That's a Ras. True. That's true. But, well... There, there's always now a Molten Giant incoming, possibly, as you said before. Plus, yeah. well, you can, you can play Molten Giant, Defend of Argus, Soulfire, and hope for his Mortal Coil to survive. Can he also heal him up? So that's, that's like, he can drop almost his whole hand, but he... <sighs> nice, free Molten Giants. That was a pretty neat draw, and... Well, now it looks perfect for Ties again, and that's uh, the strong thing <laughs> about Handlock. If you really go so far... And you know, Big Game Hunter is gone, Black Knight is gone. How are you gonna get rid of those 9-9 Taunt Molten Giants? It's not an easy task. Oh, well, he's going the safe mode with the play we call it, but he d really doesn't want to draw a card since there are two 9-9 Molten Giants on the board now. He loses his Alex Straza, but who cares? That's he 18, has, 20. He has, he has lethal next turn. That's 23, 27 damage at the moment. Just waiting to oh. crush well, down. We know there are going to be taunts, but... Well, he can go double Druid of the Claw taunt if you want to. He can go Ancient of War, but still... Nah, you, you wouldn't go double Druid. You would. Uh, of course he's going to play the faces for a 9-9 Molten Giant. No question. Oh, but that 9-9 Molten Giant is just going to die to a 9-9 Molten Giant. But that's fine. Then you got rid of one 9-9 Molten Giant. <laughs> and, and then he's, he's going to play a Druid, I guess. Well, he can kill those two small minions if he wants to. Like, double Ras. So that's, that's a possible play for him. And then there's only one 9-9 on the board. If there is no Siphon Soul incoming, and that's so annoying. If that one card left in Ty's hand would be a Siphon Soul, yeah. or, or, or even a big game hunter, there are some... Big game hunters, even in a handlock, to if you play against another handlock or against a warrior, y you y generally you play one. Generally you play one, well, but but not even generally. Some people don't. Okay, that's just a sun fear protector. That's not going to help you. And the shadow flame. Well, that's perfect. <laughs> you can just uh, pull overwhelming, overwhelming shadow, shadow flame. flame. Wow. Cra crazy draws here by Ties. He really wants to win. I, I wanted to say this game is just won by Carlos mid-game. Nope. But But then he got that second Molten Giant with the draw. And that was just too much. That was just too much to handle. And well played by Tice. That Ragnaros is not going to achieve a lot. No. Yeah, he, he plays scenarios, he dies. He plays... 
Druid of the Claw. He dies. he dies. He plays Ancient of War. He dies. He plays Ragnaros. He dies, too. Ken, he dies. It's over. So, Carlos is dead. Whatever he does. We just counted through his options, and we're, our conclusion is he dies <laughs> whatever he does. And that's never nice to see. Like, Carlos, if you're watching that game now, I'm sorry, bro. But that's really not looking good for you at the moment. You dead son. Yeah. That hurts. That was just super nice for Tice getting the second Molten Giant. And this is why Handlock is so strong. You can lose against Druid if Druid is even that early rushy, rushy Druid. But then... You'll slam the Giants away. You have the big game hunters. You have the cruel Taskmaster, whirlwind, slam, whatever, execute combos. You have a Black Knight. Plenty of stuff that get, rid, that get rid of all the big minions. That's correct. Could be Zoo also. Just rush him down faster than you can get killed. But it's a Control Warrior. And he's starting with an Execute off. That's super useful, especially if Tais would start with a giant. Now we actually see Tais had a big game hunter in his deck, so he could could draw that too instead of the Shadow Flame to end the game here. But he has a pretty stupid starting hand with a Siphon Soul, Alex, Sunfury Protector, well, and big game hunter. That minion is not going to be useful until turn eight nine. And for Carlos, well, Armor Smith plus Execute. What do you want to have more? And a Krokan. That's good. Well, I want to have more. Like, like. You want to have a shield slam too? No <laughs> problem, bro. We, we yeah, can take shield slams. We can give you everything. Oh, second siphon soul. That hurts. That's a. He's probably yeah. If, 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 you have, if you have a draw like that, you're you're sort of forced into using the coin life tap. You need some court cards. You need some options, whether it being a, a mountain giant or, or a twilight drake. He he wants to have a twilight drake really badly right now. But you never like normally n you never want to use a coin for that play, since yeah, if, yeah, if yeah. you don't use it, you can drop a turn three minion or coin out a twilight drake. But as you say, if you just have such a crappy draw and you're down to the options of playing a uh, well turn two sun fury. Draining some life, hoping for some drakes, giants, whatever. At the moment, there's nothing. There's an ancient watcher he can taunt up, well, but that's not having the impact he he's wants to. Tap. He needs to life tap and hope for. Oh, well, and then gets an Argus. He gets everything which he needs in combination with. Yeah. But he's not getting the cards he wants to combo combo on. Oh. And we see Cardus plays the Cairn, which is. Rather slow. It's slow, but against a handlock, it's okay. Yep. Against a rush deck, Karen is never good. So against a rush deck, you play Karen and then you die. For <laughs> example, since he just dropped three minions more and you just wasted a turn playing a Karen, and that didn't work out at all. Two acolytes of pain incoming. That's already funny. You can just go super acolyte of pain mode. Or and I think he drops the armor smith and armors up. It's more. Likely, so he wants to get eight armor to kill everything. What oh. comes on the board? Well, he, uh, true. The main thing is he doesn't want to to waste mana, but yeah, also he has a shield slam already on his hand, so he wants to be able to to kill the damn Twilight Drake if it's incoming. He d because he d he doesn't know if it's incoming or not. Well, he's it's not. <laughs> I, I can assure you that. This nice. is this is just extremely stupid what Tyze is drawing. <laughs> he can play a Sun Fury to taunt up his faces at his faces, his ancient watcher. But still, his hand is just ridiculous. But Carlos has a rather nice hand. So if he draws a whirlwind now that and a second shield him, perfect. if he draws a whirlwind now, that would be perfect. He can just drop down his second acolyte of pain if he wants to. And if there's a shadow flame coming, then he gets three armor, two cards. You're thinking about shield slamming away yeah. the four or five, attacking the exactly. two three to draw some cards. Yeah. Oh, uh, n mm. one option. Like, you could shield slam now and trade the one three into the four five. Then you would only draw one card, but you would draw a card, and you could still you would still be able to play the Corcron lead. Either go for the Sun Fury or for the Warlock phase. That's one option, or you armor up and then you shield slam 
plus run your 1-3 into the Sun Fury Protector, draw a card, see if it's something that has value for 2 mana, but if not, you sort of waste 2 mana. Those are the two plays I see. I agree and here. And the, the, the advantage with the core cron play is that you would, that you would get 2 mana as well. Uh, two, not two mana, sorry, two armor. I guess that's the cost-efficient way to deal with your stuff. And he even gets an armor smith, so that now we're going to call it a perfect move. But damn it, he didn't have the time to play him. Well, the question is, did he want to play him? Well, even if he didn't want to play him, I would have advised him to play him. <laughs> since I would say it's absolutely worth it. And what is Tice going to drop here? He loses? Well, he's uh, defender of Argus. Still, that's okay, but it's still uncool. Let, let's say it could be worse. And there's one more card incoming for Carlos. I'm surprised he didn't heal himself, but he has the Alex on his hand. He has two Siphon Souls, another Earthen Ring Farseer, so it makes sense. And he he needs his giant now. Well, now we have we have Karen upcoming. That's good. Just just saying, we, we have a Karen upcoming. He can just drop if, if he wants. That's a 4 or 5 minion, being on the board, being annoying. He could also just drop his Crocon, kill the 2 3. But if you do that, you're in danger mortal of a mortal coil. coil, and that's really not what you want to happen. So I would say Karen. Seems to be okay thing to do. If your enemy copies it with his faceless, well, you didn't count with it. But it's still annoying. And Carlos is thinking hard, since he really doesn't want to lose here. If he loses, his total team loses his team matchup. And that's nev you never want to be the person that like lost, lost the last game. All the other guys lost as well. well but, but you lost the last game. True. Another Ancient Watcher, but we have a Faceless roaming around. And that would be the first good minion you have if you actually faces his Cairn. Yeah. The annoying thing is, you can face this as Karen, but in order to kill it, you would need to, like, if you want to kill the enemy's Karen, you would need to run both minions in once. Well. Or use the power of Overwhelming, but that feels so wasty. You can also burn his armor, but still, now he can do with his Karen what he wants to do. Maybe Brawl, but Brawl feels like if one of his minions survives plus Bane, you're screwed. So rather go for one-time shield slam, for example, trade with a 2-3 minion. Ye Something like that seems to be okay. I was thinking about Whirlwind. Uh, shield yeah, yeah, same. Like he could also armor up, shield slam, Whirlwind execute. Armor up, shield slam. He could three. armor up, shield slam... Uh, um, no, he's one mana short of that play. Well, that play should work. If he armors up, shield slams, he can still whirlwind and execute. If he wants to. Well, he doesn't even need to. He can just, he can just, well, he has to armor up. That's. Or no, he plays Acolyte of Pain, whirlwinds, execute his shield slams. Since he's getting enough armor from the whirlwind. Yep. That's a possible play to get rid of enemy scare. And if he really wants to get rid of it. And he would draw a card. And he would get three armor. But then he's he lost a lot of cards. And if something annoying is coming, never cool. But you want to shield slam him once. So I guess I would have shield slammed him here. To Be to before your armor is gone. Like, yeah. of course you have the shield blocks. But... He wasn't short of mana. Like, he had the mana, he had the card, he had the armor. No reason to not shield slam, in my opinion. That's correct. There is a Siphon Soul now. He can also just Argus. He can drop Ancient Watcher Argus up if he wants to. Get two, four, uh, to get two, five, six minions and kill enemy Karen once. Wow, good, good mortal coil. Draw a card. I mean, he can, he can Watcher. Sun Fury, only the Watcher. I think that makes most sense. And the Leroy, so he's getting bursty and bursty, but 
Ten Your damage. enemy has 36 HP. I, I would I would go watch a Sun Fury and only taunt up the Watcher. That's a just to protect you. That's okay. an okay play. I still would have killed that Karen once. N like if you if you had killed the Karen once, it would already be Bane on four four. Y you mean Carlos? Yeah, if if Carlos had done it, it already be. What? Well, he doesn't taunt up. So he fears he fears the. Black Knight. Uh, no, the brawl. It could always be a brawl, or just Trona Rose incoming now. I guess he's willing to run in his Karen. I mean, 4-2 Karen against a 4-4 Karen. That seems like value. Or then he can sh still shield slam. Yeah, he can. He can now shield slam, play Acolyte, Whirlwind, and if he runs in his Karen, then he has a 4-5 Bane in the end, standing up. That would be actually be the sh like that would be the most HP Bane he could get in that very round, and he would draw a card. And still have the execute. Well, we, we could talk about maybe using the execute, since after you used your whirlwind, you don't have any triggers left for your um, stuff. Oh, that's a. Well, he plays Ragnaros, but there's a big game hunter and two siphon swords siphon for Ty. Siphon is more likely. Yeah. Wow. This is going to be really annoying for Carlos. He he's happy about it that. It could be worse. Yeah. He's happy about that Ragnaros hit the Cairn. Oh, that was value, Bane dead, Bane gone. So he has a 4 or 5 Bane himself. But, whoa, that Ragnaros is going to die instantly, and that just hurts a lot. You really don't want to see a Ragnaros dying like that. The good thing is, he kept his Shield Slam, he kept his Execute, and, well, he still has a Whirlwind plus Echolot Bane. So there are some good plays left for him. Can of course draw a card. And the shield slam is still there as well. Like he can armor up and boom, get rid of a giant. Okay, defend of Argus. 5-3 and 5-6 minion. So that's a pretty neat board he has here established. Go for Brawl now. Well, go for Brawl or Black Knight maybe. He can also, like, the, the big question is if you go for Brawl. Will, will y the question I have is will you get another, like, opportunity to get a good brawl off. Yes. I mean, right now, he, he could brawl, shield slam the other guy. Like, he could even get super lucky and have his five, uh, his four five surviving. Yeah, but if you go for a black knight, shield slam, and then trade with a two three. He really wants to keep his shield slam. Yeah, he really wants to keep his shield slam, but he has a well and execute. There, there's no read to cling that hard to the shield slam. And now there's even a silence, so I wouldn't, I w in that, so so late into the game, I wouldn't play my Acolyte of Pain. Without Whirlwinding or Taskmaster him immediately to get, yeah, the effect off. Yep. Well now, some value. we might just see running in his Defend of Argus plus Hellfire. Could be possible. Would bring himself down to 15, but board would be empty. And he can heal himself up with an Urzan Ring. So that's a good idea, I would say. And uh, Ty's uh, Carlos actually draws a card, so there would be some value. Everything else, well, you do not want to use Alex in this situation. Next turn, you could already be getting 12 damage from a Grimash. So you really don't want to use your Alex now. Yeah. The Shadow Flame. Still, I'm I'm s seeing the play of dropping yourself with Hellfire, healing yourself up, well is the better play here. And what 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 is what is Carlos going to draw? Harrison. Got a Harrison Jones. Well, if he keeps it, and we see a Jaraxxus, that Harrison has infinite value. That's correct. And he gets a Krokon too. He didn't get one weapon by now. This is super annoying for Carlos. Like the one thing you want to have and why you're playing Warrior. No shield block. Obvious choice because he needs to get some options. Slam. He could slam Whirlwind. The most annoying thing is you, need a trigger. you, you kind of need to get that minion killed or you're just going to lose your armor again. You just accumulated. If you play your Krokon... 
and attack his face, that Krakon is just going to die next turn, so that would be a waste. Well, you could shield slime uh, armor off Krokon, Krokon, but the problem is he drops down to 2 HP, which means 2 mana Molten Giants. So double Molten Giant Sunfear Protector, for example. Well, he can also just slam Whirlwind to get rid of the 3-3 three three if he really yeah, wants to. Then, yes, you could do it. You would draw another card, but you would lose your trigger for your Grimash. Well, that's correct. At the moment, he has no Grimash, so I guess I would take the risk here. Just dropping Harrison is okay, too. That Harrison could get soul fired, it could get siphon sold, or just attacked and bottle coiled, which is the most annoying place. There is a soul fire for Tice actually, but he still has no giants. That's some really sucky hand. Though the last four cards are Twilight Drake, Twilight Drake, Molten Giant, Molten Giant, Mountain Giant, Mountain Giant. Yeah, Tice. So this is this is the best example for a really bad draw. I'm just saying it. He can life tap, but he would be down to 14, and you're getting more and more closer to those 12 HP. Were you dead in an instant if there's Grimash Taskmaster incoming? Mm, is he actually considering doing. Mm. That's okay to do. Yeah, risky. But. That minion is just gonna get. Sold shield on. slam. Now we know it. Shield slam. And he loses one siphon soul for that so far. That's annoying. There we have the taskmaster, but we have nothing to taskmaster up. Well, I'm I'm rooting for shield slam, and he could also. I would shield slam, slam whirlwind, armor up Corcoran. Or he could also slam Taskmaster, slam Whirlwind. If he slam Taskmasters, he gets a two damage minion on the board. That's useful. So either you play him now or you use him to buff up Grimash. Buff up Grimash. But in the end, if you have a two damage minion on the board, it's the same as buffing up Grimash. It's 12 damage with a Whirlwind too. So in theory, there is no difference. He can also just keep his Shield Sam and Whirlwind execute. So we see some whirlwind value, and he can also drop his Krakon Elite if he really wants to. But you said it, we talked about it. There could be the danger of double Molten Giant, but you get your Brawn, so you shouldn't care. You just shouldn't care. I would drop my Krakon, and if he, he plays... He can Brawl Shield Slam. Yeah, if, if he drops those dub double Molten, you just do the perfect Shield Slam, uh, uh, the perfect Brawl plus Shield Slam, and that's exactly why you're having that card in your deck. Uh, mortal Coil... Real. I mean, he kind of needs to Leroy Shadow Flame, in my opinion. Well, he kind of needs to draw a giant or a Twilight Drake. I guess I guess Tys is not running him anymore. He clicked <laughs> on the wrong deck, and he just yep. he just built a handlock without giants. That makes a lot of sense. Yes, I I agree with you here. He wants to get rid of the Krokon. You're down to 10. You need to kill it instantly now, or you're just that next turn to Grimash. Well, there's no Grimash, but he, with those two Taskmasters, he could also deal 8 damage in total. What? Well, Hellfire would kill it, but it would deal, bring you down to 7. But he, he could go for Leroy. Yeah, but you, as you said, you want to combo Lira always with other stuff. You got your... He, he does, well, the question is, does he have another faceless? He already used... Did he use one? On I care. think he used, yeah. And there's Alex Straza. And, well, if you do not want to use your Leroy Shadow Flame for that, you're going to lose your Leroy Power Overwhelming Shadow Flame for an Alex Straza to get rid of that minion. And the annoying thing for Carlos would be his shield slam is useless. But he kind of, well, he needs to apply more pressure, so... He has to just use it on himself. That that Alexstrasza makes the most sense to play here. He could just drop double Taskmaster, but for what outcome? That would hurt yourself a lot. 
Maybe he's thinking about he wants to armor up. That's why he's not Alex Trazing. He has nine armor. It's fine. Like there is, of course, there is the big big combo. If he had another Soulfire and a Faceless, he could go for the kill. But there's a Twilight Drake upcoming for Ties. Finally, finally Twilight Drake hype. Good job here, and it will be a. It will be four Twilight age, Drake. If I'm correct. Yeah. Twilight Drake power overwhelming. Twilight Drake power overwhelming. Why and then and then. The why why in good gods urge? Oh well, no, no, you shouldn't. You shouldn't uh, Leroy off first. Yeah, we're going you, to see. You need the ten damage. We're going to see Leroy power overwhelming. Oh, a molten giant for one two. So this is super nice for him now. Oh he. What? Oh, he wants to to taunt up those two, but I'm still surprised since he could have got gotten rid of the 8-8 eight eight and then still do it next turn. He could just go for the value brawl. Well, you, you don't you don't need the value brawl. You just shield slam. You just copy one, shield slam the other away, and then kill the four and nine. So he can he can just shield slam away the 8-8. Eight eight Attack the 4 and 9, ping it away with the crew Taskmaster, and before he shields and away the 8 8, just faceless manipulator it. Well, it would even be smarter faceless manipulator your Alex Straza in case your enemy is playing one Black Knight. And then it would be even smarter going for your Alex. True. So, that if you consider that, I'm, I'm sh entirely sure we're not going to see a Black Knight from from the handlock but still it possibility and now Leroy power overwhelming shadow flame might we see it that's like the perfect situation now to just melt away Carla's board with what ties us on his hand then he's down to only crab like two owls hellfire or something well I think he is gonna silence the uh, eight eight attack with Leroy and the uh, power overwhelming. No, no, you cannot power overwhelm. You oh, don't you have the mana. You trade the two three into the golem, and then you use shadow flame. By doing that, you get six more damage off and keep the power overwhelming. That's true. Mm. And get it to one minion. I would like say my, my main problem with that play is if you do it. You do not have any other charge minion to use power overwhelming instantly. So that that's it's, it's true, but you that's would, the you only would problem. Waste power overwhelming in your play. And well, you, you, you would you would lose six damage because Leroy cannot charge into the face of yeah. Carlos right now. That, that's that's the thing. What I favor on your play. I just feel like the power overwhelming might not get used later on. So if you don't use it now, you might not use it the rest of your days. But still, he can draw a card like this. So th that's that's one advantage. Let's put it. Let's put it like this. That was a good advantage drawing a card, and he keeps his two three out and not the two one a uh, two one out. But as you say in your play, you would have gotten six more damage off. Well, Grimash, Taskmaster, GG. <laughs> Perfect, perfect finisher here for Carlos. But we have to admit, Tice didn't have anything on his hand. No. Well, he had a Twilight Drake, but no taunt up stuff anymore. Well played by Carlos here in the end, won the game. Tice had an extremely crappy hand, but we have to say, Luck is back next game, and if he can make it against Carlos, Carlos carried away a win here. So we are 1 1, and there's still his Druid. And, well, if he wants to play Voria himself, that's a possibility. Let's start and see what Tice has prepared for us. And Druid, Tice Druid, hype. It's his Druid. He has Stampeding Kodos. Oh, they are Kodo. super useful in this matchup. So, yeah, especially against all those acolytes, they don't get their value. You have the Taskmasters, you have the Armor Smith, so plenty of minions to to Kodo away. It's one of the best minions to have against Avoria, and you always, well, you're always annoyed. If that happens, that Kodo. It's even running Argent Commander. Well, it's the mid-rangey version. I said it before. Yeah. Tyze is a fan of that. Well, 
let's say the really old Strifecore version 2 where you run Argent Commanders or just his own RAM Druid version where he goes for, well, mid range ramp, which is more and more to be seen on ladder. I don't know. We have a good hand here for Kalis again. There's an Armor Smith, there's an Acolyte of Pain, Slam, Shield Slam, so he can do a lot of stuff with it. And Tice, well, he has a Harvest Golem at the moment. It's not the worst thing. That's a good minion. It's not the best thing either, but it's not the worst. So, there's an Armor Smith already for Carlos on the board. But that one, well, that one Harvest Golem, if it drops, there is a possibility of slam it, attack it, maybe just drop oh. your Acolyte, coin Whirlwind, whatever you want. The main problem is, yeah, if you leave it alive, we see in Tai's hand is the mark of the wild. So that's going to be a 4-5 Harvest Golem next turn. And yeah, there's... Can't risk that. There is one thing you do not want to have, and that's a 4-5 Harvest Golem. But if you really want to kill his minion, you need to slam, whirlwind, and attack with your minion to actually get completely rid of what he has on the board. And that feels not okay. And this 4-5 minion, yeah, it, it can just kill an armor smith easy mode without even blinking. So we're, we're, we're and, and the next turn, you could even see a faceless, which would be yeah, funny. Well, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm just yeah. I'm just saying there's a possibility. It's yeah, unlikely, but, but there's a possibility. no. It's not even unlikely. Is if you have a four-five harvest golem, you four. could just get two four-four harvest golem. What does he want to do against him? At the moment, he looks pretty screwed. So he can he can now slam whirlwind attack whatever. But it costs you so much to get rid of that minion. He could slam. Shield, no, shield bash. Oh, That's yes. an okay item. Finally. So now you can now slam attack. You can whirlwind attack. If yeah. you don't want to waste too much damage. But you, you're getting rid of that minion. Oh, you can even Taskmaster up if he wants to. But that would be wasty. Oh no. Like this, he keeps his armor smith, enemy minion is dead, and he even gains an armor. So, good slam. Nice nice draw here for Carlos. And he takes the board control. We're not going to see faces manipulator on a harvest golem. I'm still saying that would be a good play in that situation if you really have a 4-4 four, four, taunted up harvest golem. Yeah. That would have been a neat play. Now, well, now... There's going to be a turn 6 Argent Commander. Probably. But as we see, Carlos has a coin. So he could just go for a coin Cairn. And I see that being the most useful move at the moment. You get a strong 4-5 minion out. And then Avoria, it's not even going to stay a 4-5. You can just buff it up if you like. And then it's stronger. With the Taskmaster, of course. Yep. But we see... Tice has a faceless, which and is most likely gonna get used. Yeah, I'm I'm not surprised at all. No, me neither. But as we said, there's the possibility of a Taskmaster. He still has the Shield Slam in his hand, so we might see. Well, how how can he tr trade him most efficient? He could. Corcron, cruel Taskmaster. The Corcron trade it in. You no. I, I no, would that say that wouldn't be cool. He just attacks with his Cairn, attacks with his armor smith, then Cairn dies once. He is on two armor. He armors up again. Just shield slams Cairn for four, and then Taskmaster's Cairn away. And then his Cairn is on one HP, but he needs to kill the one HP first before he can well swipe him, for example. If he draws a silence, or if he has a silence, you're pretty screwed. But like that, you would keep a 4-5 Cairn. And that's what I think it's, is one of the best things. If he does it this way around, it also works. So he can armor up, shield slam, and run his minion in. Or not. 
I'm just I what? just I just like to kill Karen instantly. You don't need to kill Karen instantly every turn, but I just prefer to kill Karen completely if he's on the board. And now it's extremely good that he got his minion killed, actually. So my one HP Karen idea got value. that would have been fatal for him. So well played by Carlos in the end, since Tice just had a perfect top deck for him. Sad sadly, one turn too late, one turn earlier would have been way better. He could have silenced away enemy Karen, but he wanted to face it, obviously. More cards for Tice, and that's what he needs here. And he gets a roar, so as we know, there are a lot of big minions in, there are charging minions in, but he also has a roar roaming around. Yeah, it is really, really mid rangey and bursty because if you have two or three minions on the board and then go for this nine mana power of nature savage raw combo you deal incredible amount of damage he could crocon away the four four if he wants to and just shield slam, shield slam the five five out of life and it's an absolute okay play and he already has alex Strauss and grimash in his hand so he just needs to get turn 9, bring him down to 15. Turn eight, uh, turn 10, go Grimash, whirlwind, win. At the moment, it looks super nice for Carlos. Let's say card hand wise. We don't see a Taunta for Ties at the moment. So if he stays on his HP and is not advancing further hard. Well, I wouldn't have sacrificed my minion since... You're on zero armor now, and you cannot use your, uh, you cannot use your shield slam. Yeah, I, I don't get it either. So you could have used your shield slam now and go up to seven armor, since well, you you cannot use it anymore, and I'm surprised by that move. If double yeti is coming double. now, you cannot shield slam them away. Oh, is he is he going to kill Karen? Nope. Is, is or Bane? Is Bane so important? He chooses to kill him, and the annoying thing is he's down to 23, and you're going to play Alex anyway, turn 8. Yeah, Alex gets less value. Yeah, and the problem is you, you played your minions, since you, you need to play some minions, and you try to keep them alive to have a bigger impact. Now they are dead, and your enemy is anyway dropping on 15. And that's why the old control warrior was so completely OTK and didn't play any mid-rangey stuff. So let's say the really old control warrior with Ravenhold Assassin and stuff. It just attacked you and dealt damage to you late, late, late. Because it didn't make any sense to deal damage before. You're just waiting for your Alex, deal 15 damage, and then start dealing your damage. But now as we see, Carlos dealt already 7 damage and he, well, it cost him a lot of cards. But in the end, that damage, well, wasn't even necessary. And that what hurts you the most as a control warrior. Losing your Grimash to a big game hunter. This is so annoying and entirely what you do not want to happen. And Tice has an answer to everything. So this Ragnaros, you, this you swipe. Could, you could also just go for power swipe. Yeah, you could also just go for power Keep swipe. Keep the big game hunter for the Alex, for the Ragnaros. The advantage is if you go for power swipe now, as you say, your enemy, uh, n you yourself, don't need anything else for a big game hunter. Ouch! Yeah, he Ale he Alex Strazas, and that Alex Straza will get big game hunter. And there, Tice doesn't need to fear anything. So, yes, Grimash, uh, Warwind, whatever. Yeah, it's not going to happen, bro. It just just died. So we might see big game hunter plus ancient of lore, for example. Uh, yes, yes. So many cards already. He has so many plays. He can just go Big Game Hunter, Angel of Lore, Big Game Hunter. I think Big Game Hunter. Druid of the Claw, Taunt Up or Charge Up, whatever. So if, if he gets... Charge. Yeah, if he gets that minion on the board with Charge, he just wins next turn with a Roar. Yeah. That's just so much damage. That's eight. That's 12 damage on the board, plus, plus, a, plus a Roar plus eight. is plus 8 damage, plus, plus a Swipe is 24 damage. It's so much he can pull off. Well, he, he, we might see a brawl now from Carlos. The most annoying thing for Carlos now, he still has his shield slam, but he cannot use it. 
No. Oh. If. Well, he can still. If, if the big gamer would have survived, he could have used it. But yeah. How many? How many damage does he still have? So that's four plus four plus one plus four. So in total, that makes twelve thirteen. That's not enough. He's so scared of the force of nature raw combo. Well, that's correct. For and a reason. He needs to be. Double Yeti maybe, maybe, or just Ragnaros. Yeti Harvest, Ancient of Lore Harvest. So many plays he can Think do two here. damage. Yeah, just, just get rid of him. Drop Yeti a Yeti. and passive, yeah. This is just a nice game for Tyus. And, whoa, Carlos has some cards in his hand. But since Tyus is not playing any Tauntas, that Black Knight is <laughs> absolutely useless at the moment. Six, 12, 16, 17 damage on his hand for next turn. Well, the good thing is he can slam, armor up, shield slam, play the Krakon, for example, to get rid of everything on the board. It seems to be, for me, the safest play. So if he armors up, shoots, he's on 5 mana, and he can still go for Krakon. Yep. So that would save his ass in case of a Force of Nature and Roar, plus 1 minion on the board. That's 18 damage. For example, with the 2-4. But Tyus, well, he... Carlos is doing a good job clearing, but we just see that Ragnaros roaming around. And if he... Ragnaros. Wow, Ragnaros. Wow, swipe Ragnaros. Well, or Ragnaros, innovate, chill with Yeti, just be happy. There are some, there are some possible plays. Well, or, or just Harvest Golem, innovate, hero ability, kill. You you do not uh, you do not need to fear Grimash, so just get your minions out, take some damage, you don't care, and win the turn with Roar. So he, he got two minions out now, and well, I don't see Carlos killing those two. It looks like Tice next turn can win. Oh, next turn not, but can win game soonish with Roar. No, he's 7, nice. 11, 13, 14, 18. Acolyte of Pain will win execute the uh, Ancient of Lore. It seems to be a good play. Well, it's as the only say. one. <laughs> Harrison, useless now. Well, he has to throw it down. Like, execute, play Harrison. That's a good thing to have a Harrison. I mean, that's a 5 4 minion, but still. damage. He would die if it's a Force of Nature next turn. But he would. He, there's no way he can get rid of both. Oh, is a Force of Nature? It's only 18. So well, he, he has a swipe. I oh, know he can't. He cannot use it. He cannot use force of nature raw and swipe. Yes, that would be super good if he could. If he gets another innovate, he could hero ability. And that's enough. That would be 19. That would be close. Yeah. But he can clear the board easy mode now. So if you if you even wants to just attack the acolyte of pain, swipe away, drop Karen, just drop Ragnaros, be happy. I I would I would drop the Yeti and go for Wild Cross rather than dropping Karen, but that's just personal preference, I guess. Well, the Karen has the advantage if an enemy Ragnaros would come, and that hits your Karen, you get a Bane, and you can do a revenge move. And that's a good thing about Karen. If he hits your Yeti, you're screwed, since well then your Yeti is gone and you're sitting there and you don't know what to do. So I would say Karen is the better play here. If you turn it like this, there's a fiery fury war X plus a shield block for Carlos. The first shield block. Shield block, must have now. Yeah, can draw good cards. And wh what's bugging him the most is just, well, Tyze is not playing one taunter, and he has a black knight against a druid. And if you want to use your black knight against something, then it's against a druid. That's the one class you want to demolish with your black knight. And no taunts for the druid. Yeah, Tys is just playing some really nice mid rangey version and it works out really well for him it seems. Very aggressive. Apart from the Cairn. Yeah, very aggressive. He deals a lot of damage with it. It works well. And well, White Rose can draw him a lot of cards. He has Ragnaros still roaming around. And he's just waiting to roar here. I don't even know if he pl he, if he's playing Force of Nature or, or if he just has <laughs> that roar in to deal. Crazy amounts of damage. 
So uh, now, now, it's Ragnaros time. now it's Ragnaros time. That's just going to be 12 damage. Too much to not to. Are we going to see an innervate? Someone is getting not lucky with his draws. The better is it, like, by dropping all those minions, he gets more and more value for his roar. So I can understand why he doesn't want to drop Ragnaros. That's 8, 9 damage. And plus he, keeps, he, he keeps board control. Plus 8. So we would be on 17, 18 damage possible next turn with what is on the board. Even more, he can just drop Ragnaros plus Innervate <laughs> Roar. And that would be enough damage to win the game if he's able to pull that off. We see a faceless here, but... Well, what? Innervate Ragnaros Roar? Yeah. If he hits the face, well, if, if your enemy plays two minions, uh, one minion, and you do not hit the face, sad face, but if you hit the face... Fine. You yeah, kill you the minion, you keep the ward control. That's correct. Well, if he drops Karen, we might see Tice going really safe mode, just harass on Karen and deal with it, for example. That four damage harass. Or he's just going for the maybe I win or maybe I don't move. That's a lot. Well, fi fifty. It's, ca it's kind of risky because uh, there's a rest. Well, now he. The has problem is if if Carlos gets if Carlos gets his Ragnaros and gets lucky, he could kill him. That's correct. There is. As we said, 18 damage waiting with a roar. I guess maybe just rest twice yeah. to draw two cards. No. You could you could just oh do I that. I and um, nah, just go for rest four damage, rest four damage, trade in Salnus. Salnus, you still have six mana, and you're just safe. You deal eight damage. And then next Six turn. mana, you could even innovate Ragnaros then. And we were talking about that. And or then, then, he's, then he's at four, 4 HP. Or he just wants to drop it now, and if it hits the face, your enemy drops extremely low. Well, I would say just a roar. In my opinion, a roar is a good thing to do here, even though if you don't attack with your... Yeah, now now why you can... Why not, why not innovate Ragnaros? Well, you can, you can just roar now, still, and even drop... Or did, did, was, wasn't it lethal if he if he um, innovated out his Druid of the Claw before before going for Roar? Yes. Yeah, that would that would have been lethal. So he, I guess, I guess he just didn't want to wait for that. <laughs> he just he just instantly played the Roar and didn't well, even think about the option. No, he he dealt one damage like. Amplified by Thalnus, so it was two damage, and he needed the Savage 